Okay, so in this video we're going to be working with our pause menu and the Singleton Game Scene Manager. Uh, by the end of this video, I think we're going to be taking much of this functionality, like opening a menu and closing a menu, and we'll be able to actually just straight up take it out of this class, and rather have most of our functionality go with the system, or the manager, whatever you want to call it, uh, where the code that actually executes will exist here. So for that reason, we're just going to make the game scene manager change to menu manager uh, because we really only want this class to be for this specific function. So menu manager, just make sure that wherever there's a reference to that name, we change it here. Uh, so menu manager and all those four spaces and the name of the file as well. And we will change this open pause menu to open menu. And in order to open a menu, we need to know which game object we are referencing. So game object menu prefab. Yeah, and we can actually call this more like create menu. Now, whether it makes sense to you to actually have the menus exist inside of your scene all the time on a canvas that is set up in your hierarchy, or if you want to create them on demand with instantiation, uh, that's up to you. For right now, I'm just going to keep it as instantiate because that's what we were doing in the last couple of videos. Um, so we need to create a menu from a menu prefab. So we'll take this parameter and make it instantiate that menu prefab at the scene canvas dot transform. Um, and since we'll be creating and deleting menus on demand, uh, I'll just get rid of this part because the idea here is going to be I'm always going to destroy those menus. So I we'll also want a public void destroy menu, which will have a reference to a menu mono behavior. So I'll call this menu menu and we'll create this menu class. Uh, we can actually just go ahead and do that here. So I will. So this name actually conflicts with something in the unity editor. So we could call this something else like game menu. Uh, just to keep it be two separate names and then we can generate this in a new file which will be created inside of the same uh, directory as long as we're using Visual Studio Code and so this is going to be a mono behavior which should be attached to every game menu prefab so let's import that from unity engine there and we'll worry about what this actually does in a min minute so now for destroy menu we'll check if menu does not equal null then we'll destroy menu dot game object and we can actually have the menu manager maintain a list of these menu game objects if there's more than one on the screen so i guess we'll call this list uh, whoops list of uh, game menu and we'll call this active menus now we're going to want this active menus to be fresh every time this menu manager instantiates itself. So we can overwrite, uh, override the initialize method. Um, so that's going to be private or no, no, protected, sorry. And then the return type is void. And we do base.initialize here to make sure it gets added to the singleton updater. And now we can set active menus to a new list of a game menu. So something I'm not 100% sure on here is if we can reference a prefab as the script that's attached to that prefab. So instead of passing in a game object menu prefab, uh, both in the inspector and down here, can we just reference, uh, let's say public game menu, and then we'll call this menu prefab and then we'll call this pause menu prefab 2 um actually we'll just we'll call this pause menu prefab and comment out the game object version of that and then we'll pass in game menu over here and then menu and then for open pause menu instead we just want to open the prefab so we'll do create menu here and we'll use the prefab so now we want to actually instantiate the the menu dot game object so whenever you reference a prefab in the editor when the game actually loads it becomes its own game object so in theory 
this game menu script should be attached to its own game object and we should be able to instantiate a copy of that game object with this instantiate method. Um, so we have to see if that's actually going to work though. Now for future reference we want to be able to keep track of all of the active menus. So as we create this game object new menu, uh, we also want to add that to the active menu. So I'll do uh, new menu and we'll get component on that which is going to be the game menu so this is the new instance of the game menu script on the new instance of the game object and when we destroy the menu we also want to remove it from the active menu so active menus dot remove menu removing it from the list and then we destroy the game object so by doing this uh, this active menus list should contain all the references to the active menus as long as we always remember to call create menu and destroy menu um, when we're loading and unloading our game menus. So uh, with that let's do a little testing back in the editor. So we have this menu manager and it is a scriptable object so we go back over to our resources systems folder and we find the object and now we're looking for the pause menu prefab so this pause menu prefab as it stands right now should be a game menu, not an actual prefab. So let's see what happens when we actually change that. Pause menu prefab, and it's still there. Okay, let's try that one more time. Pause menu prefab. Hmm. Ah, okay. Um, uh, you know what the problem is? Uh, we changed the name of the class, so the actual scriptable object is lost reference to it. That, that is one downside of having these scriptable objects, so be careful about that. If you change the class name, you might need to recreate your object or at least uh, re-reference the uh, script there. So I'm going to just recreate the object to be a little quicker, and let's try getting a reference to that pause menu. Ah, okay, so that doesn't actually work. We do need to reference the game object itself. Okay, so given that that's the case, we'll have game object pause menu prefab. And all that we'll need to change here is that when we're calling a method on it, like creating the menu, we just need to get the component out of that prefab. And we should also make sure that that actually exists, the component. So we're going to call this. So in the on update code, we're going to call game menu menu equals the prefab dot get component uh, game menu. And if menu does not equal null, then we will create the menu with that. And we can move this comment up here. So create the menu with the menu. Otherwise, we should log an error. So debug log error pause menu prefab has no game menu script attached to it. And git component, you also have to put the little parentheses there because it is calling a method. Okay, great. So now we can attach the pause menu prefab here. Now, if we run the game as is, it's going to error out because this pause menu prefab does not have the script attached to it, uh, hence writing this debug message code. Uh, so let's actually just go ahead and test that out in game. When I hit escape, we should get an error. So I hit escape and oh look, we get the error because there's no script attached to it. So uh, we need that script attached because the menu is going to contain some references, hopefully. So at this point, what the menu will be responsible for is containing uh, probably mostly references to the button variables and that sort of thing, um, and maybe some properties as well. But most of the code will actually be run in this menu manager. But let's just attach the script to that prefab. So we're going to call the game menu script, and obviously there's nothing on it yet, but as we add stuff to it, we want to make sure that it is um, actually already loaded in there. So, so let's play it now, hit escape, and it's loading again. Now the close button doesn't work at all right now because we're not using the pause menu script anymore. I, I'm not even sure we need this close menu function here because I think game objects can just call this directly. So we'll actually see by basically going into this prefab Okay, and we'll need it in the hierarchy temporarily, but we'll go into the prefab and find the close menu button, which I will rename menu button. 
And let's see if we can just add the on click event directly here. So pause menu being referenced there. And we'll go into functions game object. Okay, so it has set active, but it doesn't have destroy. So there's a few different ways we could go about it here. We could add the close menu method into the game menu script, which would be pretty much how we had it in the two videos ago. We could also just have it call game object dot set active, and we'll make that not active. And then in our menu manager script, we can just check to see if any of the game menu game objects are inactive, and if so, just destroy them. Or a third option would be we can take the pause menu uh, with the game menu script and have this take a reference to our close menu button. And then from there, we just call the game manager or menu manager. And from there, inside of the game menu script, we will just call menu manager .instance .destroy menu. And that would be better if we actually want to keep track of all of these active menus which I'm honestly not 100% sure if we would need that later on or not, but um, being able to manage it like this would allow us to play around with these game menus if we ever needed to change something, like if we, I don't know, you needed to change the color of all the game menus simultaneously or something like that. Okay, so for the sake of argument though, I think what we will go with is that we're gonna keep the functionality in the menu manager, and then the game menu will simply contain a reference to the button, and as we create a new menu, as long as the menu manager exists, it's going to add onto that button the functionality where when it's clicked, it's going to destroy the menu.